You know if the Coca-Cola can was made, there must be a maker. When I look at a painting, how can I know there was a painter? Well, the painting is absolute, 100% scientific proof there was a painter. Well, the building is absolute, 100% scientific proof there was a builder. Yeah, tell it, brother. Just like rocks are 100% absolute proof of a rock-making god. Just like sunsets is 100% absolute scientific proof of a sunset-making factory. Yeah, and just like a nearly perfectly spherical Mars is 100% absolute proof that there is a Mars maker. Oh yeah, that's right, I remember now. The reason we don't think that sunsets are made by a sunset-making god is because we understand the origin of sunsets. We can still say that God did it, it's just that that doesn't advance our understanding of the world any. And it's a path that leads to an intellectual dead end. If it's designed, there must be a designer. This statement is of course tautological. But the question is how can you recognize design? For instance, crystals are among the most ordered objects in the universe. Yet we do not instantly reach for a crystal making God to try and explain the existence of these highly ordered structures. Again, the reason that we do not reach for a god to explain these structures is because we have a perfectly satisfactory naturalistic explanation of the origin of crystals. There is nothing wrong with a tautological statement that designed objects are designed. There is nothing wrong with a statement that paintings, etc. are designed, simply as they have no plausible naturalistic explanation for their origin. However, there is a naturalistic explanation for life. It's called evolution. And before the creationists start coming out with their unfounded tosh about how it's never been observed and so on, it's more than observed. The principle of evolution is used by the likes of engineers to design aerodynamic bodies. A sort of design without a designer. Indeed, even I myself have written such pieces of code. All you need is reproduction with variation and environmental attrition and evolution intrinsically follows. This is not just some animation, but the front end of an evolutionary algorithm where the bugs are actually evolving to the environment. Well, let's just highlight the logical flaws of this typical creation argument that designed objects such as paintings, buildings, etc. require a designer. Life looks designed, so it must have a designer. Let me parody this creationist logic. Let me take a load of pebbles and see if any of them perfectly fit a shot glass. The answer is no. Indeed, I could keep on trying to get pebbles to fit this shot glass in perpetuity and never find one that fits it perfectly. Indeed, I could happily conclude that the only way for a pebble to fit the shot glass perfectly is if it were designed to fit the shot glass. Liquids, however, fit the shot glass perfectly every time. So, by the creationist logic, the liquid must be designed to fit the glass. Now the reason this argument is bogus, of course, is simply because the two objects being compared have different critical properties. In my case, I am comparing deformable matter such as liquids to solids, and drawing the bogus conclusion that liquids must be designed to fit the glass. In the creationist case, they are comparing objects that are known to be manufactured with objects that can evolve that is, objects that suffer environmental attrition and reproduction with variation, and then drawing the bogus conclusion that life must be designed. 